Bye, be careful. Bye, Sam. Bye, don't get yourself We'll cold. miss you. So I'm off on the Chateau Trace, setting off on a Sunday morning in May. It's been raining a whole lot here the last three weeks and a whole bunch in the last two days and the river is very high. I'm walking along Clear Creek which it's one of the tributaries of the Big South Fork River. It's way up over its banks. Yesterday on Saturday, Andrea and Sam and I drove two cars to the northern terminus of the Sheltoe Trace near Moorhead, Kentucky. Dropped one car at the end of the trail and then got in the other car and headed towards the southern terminus and then they dropped me off this morning. That was about a half an hour ago. I definitely had a, uh, my God, what have I done, kind of a feeling as they were pulling away. My plan is to average 20 miles a day throughout this trip. If I do that, I can get it done in two and a half weeks. If I don't go that fast, I'm gonna run out of food and I'll have to find another way to resupply in towns and so forth. So that's one of the main things I'm keeping my eye on now, whether I can keep the pace up. I got my base weight down finally after discarding a lot of items, mostly, mostly cold weather clothing and sleeping clothes. After getting rid of that, those clothes and other things, I finally got my base weight down to 17 and a half pounds. Got to climb up the rock face here. There's a rope. There's the blaze, I guess I gotta go through this. It's a tight squeeze here, kinda hard on the knees. Uh. That's where I came from, through there. And now we forward the creek again and head up that slope. I've made it to Leatherwood Ford, 13 miles in. I feel like I'm making pretty good progress. I still feel good. I'm going to go another five miles 
before I stop for the night. Here's the first little bit of drama. The bridge here is out. I was here with Scott Taylor a couple months ago. We crossed this bridge here and we both agreed that it didn't look like it was going to last much longer. It was really weak right at the point down there where it broke. And you can tell that people have been going down here, getting on the bridge, going up the steep incline, and then crossing it. Should I do it? No, I'm not going to get up on that rickety old bridge. I turned around, I'm going back down the trail. I think there's a place where I can cross. Now I'm at the place where I camped with Scott Taylor a few months ago, just before Christmas. We had the Christmas tree set up in our video. And we camped right here. And on the other side of this bank, there's some uh, little pink ribbons. I think it's the preferred method of crossing now that the bridge is out. And there's a steep embankment on the other side. But I know that if I head up that hill, I'll meet up again with the trail and not very far, so that's what I'm going to do. One night down. First night I don't usually sleep so well when I'm out in the woods. I got no sleep but I was awake some of the night. It was really cold. It was between 35 and 40 degrees. And the problem was I'm just not prepared for really, really cold weather. So I put on all my clothes including my down jacket. I was pretty sore overnight too. I have kind of a sharp pain in my upper right thigh that I could really feel it if uh, you know if I press on my thigh but when I'm walking it's pretty much unnoticeable and this morning it seems to be going away I don't think that's going to be a big problem and I have kind of a strange abrasion on one of the toes of my right foot I've never seen something like that I don't know what caused it but pretty sure it's minor. I can put a band-aid around it or something or some gauze because I brought that stuff with me. Make sure I keep my feet in good repair if possible. So five miles later this is my first Ford of Laurel Fork Creek of four fords that I have to do. The water's really high. I realized why I have that weird abrasion on my foot. Yesterday I had to cross a bunch of creeks and I took my socks off and then a lot of times I didn't put my socks back on so I walked a lot of miles yesterday without any socks. Okay I'm over. I'm going to put my socks back on real soon. So that's the first of four. And uh, I hope nobody blames me. I'm not going to film the other three. That one's going to be representative of all the Laurel Fork Creek crossings. The Chateauwee Trace is a 325 mile trail that begins in Tennessee and then runs through Kentucky. On this map, which is on the back of the trail guide, you can see the route the trail takes through Kentucky and the Daniel Boone National Forest. 
It doesn't show Tennessee because it's an old map. Now the trail begins in the Big South Fork National River and Recreation Area where I'm at now. I'll be in the Big South Fork for 45 or 50 miles before I get into Kentucky. Then once I'm in Kentucky, I see all sorts of interesting things. Cumberland Falls, Red River Gorge, a couple of lake recreation areas. Should be a really interesting trail. I've done a lot of the trail down here in the south, but as I head northbound, once I'm into Kentucky about 40 miles, it'll all be new to me. So I'm a couple miles past Cherrick Creek Lodge. I've sat down to eat lunch. I thought this might be a good time to talk about my food. What you're looking at here is a typical day's food. Most of my calories, or a whole lot of them, come from breakfast. This is granola, a lot of it, with powdered milk mixed in. Not the non-fat kind, but the kind with fat. And also instant coffee. Then I eat some bars during the day. Five various varieties and I have some raisins, some peanuts, and then for dinner I have uh, tuna. Instead of the tuna I can substitute sardines on some days and I also have potatoes that I can substitute for the uh, raisins. The potatoes I eat cold. I'm not cooking on this trip. I don't have a stove. I don't have to carry any fuel. And the reason I'm doing that is both to make things quicker at night when I don't feel like cooking, to make things a little bit easier, lighter, and also because I pass some restaurants along the way. There's a restaurant at Cumberland um, Falls State Park, a restaurant at Natural Bridge State Park, and a couple other places along the way that if I want some cooked food I can get it there. I started the trip yesterday with food enough for five days to get me 100 miles to my first resupply at Cumberland Falls. So I got to keep the pace up, make sure I get there for my food. I made it to the John Muir Overlook. This is about how far I need to go today, but I'm gonna keep going a little ways. I already got some water way down below. I just have to find a place that's a little flat and isn't right here on this cliff where it's windy. Then I'm gonna set up. Well, I just picked a random spot that looked a little flat in the woods, off the trail, the surroundings. Kind of a pretty area. And it was raining a little bit when I was setting this up. Just sprinkled for about five minutes, but I decided to do a good job with it anyway, in case it rains more later. So, this is the design that I called last year when I was on the Benton Mackay Trail the Flying Diamond and I have two tracking poles in the back or the front depending on how you look at it on each side with the corner pulled down and then in back the top of the tarp is tied off to a tree because I want to prevent any flat areas on the tarp which might allow rain to get through. Here's the inside with my sleeping bag inside of this bivy sack. Well it's 10 o'clock under the tarp. I'm about to try to go to sleep. It's very quiet here. I'm not camping near any water sources, any rivers or creeks and all I can hear off in the distance is a whippoorwill and every once in a while a jet flies over, but other than that it's very quiet. Which is kind of how I like it, because if any animals try to sneak up I'll be able to hear them. I have some aches and pains. My feet hurt. I don't just quite feel right all over. 
but I'm hoping that's just the uh, normal expected beginning of a long hike. I'll find out a little bit more about that tomorrow. I'm hoping to be able to sleep well tonight. Last night, I had some bad dreams. Just not waking up quite. I would feel like I was lost outdoors somewhere, I didn't know where, and I would never get back. And I'd wake up finally, go back to sleep and have the same dream. It was a little troubling. But then when I woke up in the morning, the sun started coming up and I felt great to be able to get back out, see some more waterfalls, some more vistas, get my feet wet again. And I was excited to continue on. And that's the attitude I'm going to take with me into the rest of the hike, at least to tomorrow morning.